Class II devices are higher risk, yet still considered non-life-sustaining. This means that while the general controls of Class I devices are insufficient in providing reasonable assurance of the device safety and effectiveness, there is enough information to establish special controls that provide this assurance. Class II devices must meet specific controls and mandatory performance standards in terms of both accuracy and reproducibility. The FDA has also published a list of Class II special controls, devices subject to certain limitations that are exempt from pre-market notification requirements. Why might the FDA offer these exemptions? The FDA believes certain exemptions will relieve manufacturers from the task of completing pre-market notification submissions, enabling the FDA to redirect the resources it would otherwise spend reviewing these submissions to more significant or urgent public health issues. But what about Class III devices? Class III devices are devices for which general controls by themselves are insufficient and for which there is insufficient information to establish special controls to provide reasonable assurance of the device safety and effectiveness. These devices typically require pre-market approval to ensure their safety and effectiveness. In conclusion, if a device is classified as Class I or Class II and it is not exempt, a 510K will be required for marketing purposes. If a device is deemed Class III, pre-market approval will be required. The FDA considers any entirely new device high risk. This means that any novel medical device is categorized as a Class III device. However, many new medical devices are not high risk. This is why the FDA added the de novo classification process to reduce the regulatory costs for low and medium risk devices. Some diseases affect fewer than 200,000 people in the U.S. These are called rare diseases. According to the FDA, only a portion of the 7,000 known rare diseases currently have approved treatments. This presents a challenge for manufacturers in meeting FDA expectations. As rare diseases occur in just a small number of patients, there is not enough clinical evidence to meet FDA standards for reasonable assurance that a medical device is safe and effective. The U.S. Congress included a provision in the Safe Medical Devices Act of 1990 that created a new regulatory pathway for products that target rare diseases or conditions. This is known as the Humanitarian Device Exception Program, or HDE. The application of the HDE program is similar to the pre-market approval, PMA, applicable to Class III devices, but it is exempt from the effectiveness requirements. The HDE program does not require the results of clinical investigations. Does this make sense? Great! Now we are going to share one of the most helpful sources of device classification in the U.S. This is the FDA's product code classification database. 